Tonight on Connecticut's news station, backlash in Bridgeport after possible misconduct involving absentee ballots during the mayoral primary election. We're taking a closer look at the video in question. Carjacking caught on camera. Police searching for the suspects who stole a car right from a homeowner's garage. And housing development concerns. Neighbors in one community are calling for an investigation into who's leading the project on their streets. Plus, the state's minimum wage set to go up in the new year, but some say the move could have consequences. Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And good evening, and thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Hart. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. We have a story that Fox 61 has been covering since primary night, the mayoral race in Bridgeport. And now new surveillance video has surfaced that appears to show a city worker stuffing absentee ballots into a drop box. Fox 61's Matt Karen joins us from the Bridgeport Government Center where the incident allegedly occurred. Matt. Well, behind me is the absentee ballot drop box in question. This is where the Gomes campaign says that a city worker illegally deposited fistfuls of absentee ballots during the early morning hours one week before primary day. The John Gomes for Mayor campaign releasing this surveillance video, which appears to show a city worker making seven separate drops into the absentee ballot box outside the city's government center in a two hour span a week before primary day. Now imagine what else has been happening that we have not seen. Bridgeport Police confirmed an investigation is underway into possible misconduct. The Secretary of the State's office also planning to address what they call reports of alleged absentee ballot malfeasance. The Gomes campaign claims the city worker in the video is Wanda Jeter Pataki, the vice chair of the Bridgeport Democratic Town Committee. Hey, yeah, we're back. We're looking for Wanda. Fox 61 tried to speak with Jeter Pataki, who works at the Bridgeport Government Center's front desk. We then took our camera to Mayor Joe Ganim's office, Communication Director Theodora Joseph. And we wanted to know where Wanda was. I cannot give you that information at this time. She's so a public employee. She's if she's not down there, so then she must have taken a day. Mayor Ganim declined to speak to Fox 61 Monday, but did speak to us last week. If he has issues with them, I'm sure there's a process that he could take a look at, but that's a little bit of sour grapes at this point. Um, we've seen this we've seen this movie before, but just, you know, disgruntled uh, losers, frankly. The response from Gomes. I would like to say to uh, Mayor Ganim that he lost by under poll by 470 votes. It took 50 years and everything he had, and yet the people spoke loud and clear. They want to change. The Gomes campaign says as a result of its evidence, a lawsuit was filed to have the primary results thrown out and a new vote to be held. In addition, we'll be seeking a restraining order against the distribution of any additional absentee ballot applications from the town clerk's office. We are calling upon the state police to take immediate action we believe that the 2019 recommendation for investigation should be pursued vigorously to ensure accountability for any wrongdoing. The State Elections Enforcement Commission told me they can neither confirm or deny allegations of voting impropriety in Bridgeport, but a public meeting will be held Wednesday morning. We should also mention that when we tried to get an interview with Mayor Ganim, we were told we needed an appointment and the police were called on us for trying to access a public official. Reporting in Bridgeport outside the Government Center, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Matt, thank you. Now, continuing our coverage on the Bridgeport mayoral race, the Secretary of the State's office is calling on the State Elections Enforcement Commission to investigate the claims of possible misconduct. This news breaking in just the last half hour after the uh, Secretary of the State press conference. Fox 61's D'Andrea Turner joins us in studio with more on what the Secretary of the State's office is saying. D'Andrea. Well, in this press conference, the Secretary of State says that they've just received numerous complaints and concerns from people over the last few days, but she honed in on the fact that their office doesn't have the authority to investigate the alleged improper actions. Now, Secretary Thomas says that the public has the is correctly concerned and outraged, and she says that her office, again, does not have the authority to investigate those type of things, but she is calling on the State Election Enforcement Commission and Governor Ned Lamont Ned Lamont also says the integrity of our electoral system is important, so he also wants this to be investigated.
I want to go after this aggressively. I want to leave no stone unturned. I want to make sure the investigators move and move quickly. And if the courts are going to be involved as early as tomorrow, I want them to make a quick decision. Now, coming up at 10 and 11, I'll have further, I'll be further breaking down what the Secretary of State Office is allowed to do and who else has the authority to investigate these type of allegations. In the Breaking News Center, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61, Connecticut News Station. DeAndrea, thank you. We have new video tonight. Police searching for two suspects involved in a carjacking at a home in Westport. Uh, this happening at a home on Bayberry Lane yesterday afternoon. One of the residents told police that after he pulled into his garage, two suspects walked into the garage. The suspects are then seen on this video assaulting the victim before physically removing him and driving off with the blue Aston Martin. Police believe the suspects first arrived at the home in a dark blue BMW that itself was stolen out of Norwalk. Both cars were last seen driving north on Route 8. Police believe the victim was targeted and followed back to his residence. New at 6, the Office of Inspector General is investigating an officer-involved shooting in Orange. According to the Inspector General report, police were responding to a reported burglary at the Burlington Coat Factory on Boston Post Road on Friday. When police arrived, they found Maurice Keys with a laundry basket full of items. According to the report, Keyes ran to a car in the parking lot to flee. That's when Officer Kurt Correa attempted to get Keyes out of the car and a struggle ensued. The car backed up into an orange police department cruiser before heading toward Boston Post Road with Officer Correa still partially inside. At this point, another officer on scene, Eric Restaino, fired one round at the car. No one was hit. Keys, along with the driver of the car, Tamisha Hopkins, were taken into custody. Officials say the officer did not have their body cameras activated during the incident. Turning to the weather now, rainy start to the week. It felt very Monday-ish. Yeah, it sure did. <laughs> Had a very Monday feel. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now. Rachel, what does Tuesday through Friday look like right now? Amazing. The complete opposite of today with lots of sunshine, low humidity, and everything that we love about September that today was certainly lacking. There is a bit of a break in the action from the steady rain that we dealt with for much of the day in the western half of the state, but it's still raining pretty good right now, especially in eastern areas right along the Rhode Island border. So we'll zoom in and take a closer look at some of these heavier downpours from North Stonington up through Griswold, killingly seeing some heavy rain right along that 395 corridor. The windshield wipers are going like crazy in Thompson and Putnam. And if we go back towards the Hartford area, we've seen some pretty persistent showers, but they haven't been as heavy over the last hour or so. But we look to the west and there's another round of rain that is slow slowly, slowly approaching. So a break and then more rain coming through. But as we're gearing up for the news at 10 and 11, it should be on its last legs and pushing out. Temperatures right now are in the 60s, so it certainly feels a little bit like early fall out there. We're almost there, right? Overnight lows in the 50s. Look at tomorrow. Sunshine, a bit breezy, low to mid 70s top 10 weather day and I hope you like it because we're going to be stuck with this weather for a little while. Your full forecast coming up. I think we like it. Thank you, Rachel. Several mixed use housing projects are being called a key to improving a crime riddled section of the capital city. And now those pushing for investment are calling on the city of Hartford to pause and investigate its preferred developer. Fox 61 Samaya Hernandez has the latest. And Elite Properties is set to move forward with several major developments here along Albany Avenue. Now advocates are calling for an investigation, but they say they don't want that to stop projects that took more than a decade to get off the ground. Irving Street homeowners fed up with drug activity, loitering, fighting, stabbings and shootings surrounding an old police substation. I remember being a child driving by the police substation I am 39 years old and I'm driving by the same deplorable, depleted police substation. The solution, after meeting with city officials and advocates, prioritizing a development here on Albany Avenue. But now the Center for Leadership and Justice is calling for an investigation before the projects move forward with Andalee Properties of Bloomfield. What we seem to have here today is a developer connected to many LLCs with a complex family ownership structure. This has been true of the slumlord cases we have dealt with over the last six years. Not again. Somebody say not again. Not again, not on our watch, no way.
way. The calls come nearly a week after Fox 61's exclusive report showed Edgewood Street tenants of Bloomfield Base and Ali properties living in a three family home condemned by the city last year. I look up and I've got fungus and black mold and mushrooms. Mayor Luke Bronin says Ace and Alib was the only developer to bid on the latest project. We want to know what developers are citing as barriers and then want to see a plan for addressing those barriers. We would like to see the tenant issues and complaint resolved and better handling of the processes within the city. Bronin told Fox 61 the city is prioritizing the project and looking into its preferred developer. We're going to look across that whole portfolio. City councilors tell me that they intend to discuss these projects at the next city council meeting later this month. In Hartford, I'm Samaya Hernandez, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Samaya, so thanks. And some of Connecticut's representatives on Capitol Hill are working to pass better, safer standards for housing here at home. They say the Healthy at Home Act was largely inspired by continuing mold complaints at the Branford Manor Apartments, which is federally assisted housing in Groton. If passed, it would provide money for landlords to do better and improve safety conditions, but would also enforce consequences for those who don't. One person is dead after being struck while crossing I-95 North in Stamford. Police say a pedestrian was hit just before 9 last night in the area of exit 8. The pedestrian was taken to the hospital and was pronounced dead. Their identity has not been released. Anyone who witnessed the crash should contact state police. In Waterbury now, police have identified the person who died in a crash involving an SUV and a pickup truck. Police say William Buttrey was driving the pickup truck. They say after the crash, Buttrey also crashed into St. John's Episcopal Church. Police say the driver of the SUV was not injured. The church had minor damage. Tonight in Norwich, students, teachers, and parents are expected to rally again ahead of a special Board of Education meeting. The board meeting set for 7 p.m. will discuss the appointment of an acting school superintendent. The Norwich community is urging the Board of Education to end what is being called a climate of fear and retaliation by top school administrators. A recent survey found that 96 percent of teachers fear retaliation from the district's superintendent if they speak up. A new sports experience at the Excel Center, a sports book, opens today. The venue will include a bar and restaurant. The new sports book opens up just in time for the new NFL and NCAA football seasons. The NFL is the league that draws the most bets. We'll still to come here.